This is Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom Podcast. We infuse, we energize, we inspire, and we empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes in BW and beyond. Hello and welcome to another episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom Podcast. Uh, I'm your host. As always, I'm excited and energized to bring you yet another entrepreneur. Let me correct myself. It's more of an entrepreneur because it's someone who's doing very well within a company setting. And as you know, we uh, showcase entrepreneurs as well. And she will introduce herself momentarily. But before we start, let me ask you to do the, the usual favor of hitting that subscribe button and of course, the notification bell as well. And it would be nice if you can comment on some of the content. If you have a question, you need clarification on a point, please don't hesitate to uh, drop us a comment. Um, welcome to the studio, Madam uh, Katso. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a privilege and an honor. And uh, the fact that we're sharing the same office complex it's uh, nice, makes it nice <laughs> that we're interacting in a slightly different setting. Yeah. Uh, would you care to tell the audience who you are and share, if you like, your CV a little bit? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, my name is Katso Laura Khaurute. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a young lady, just um, born and raised in Lubadze, but originally from Munapolole. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up here. Um, Kitsenico, I went to school in Rainbow, went to Lahai Academy, and then I went to university in Monash, South Africa. I am one of those. I studied international finance and banking and then, whoop, did a detour mm. into the marketing field. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's basically did that. Did you I get have. any training in the marketing field? Oh yes, my. I did. I have quite a number of, um, okay, I did a diploma in social media strategy first. Mm -hmm. And then I did um, three specializations, one in content marketing, mm -hmm. one in media communications, and one in brand um, positioning and management. The first one, what, what kind of diploma or course was it? The one on uh, social media marketing. Oh, I did it online. It was actually during COVID. Mm -hmm. It was during um, the lockdown, our first lockdown. Mm. Um, to keep busy, also to it was at a point where I knew for sure that I wasn't, I wasn't, nixabatli finance. Mm. So it was one of those where I my mom and i sat down and we talked about it and she was like okay here's a little bit of change do an online course so i did it through london school of business what did they teach you there um so basically the course also it was a very um pro project base mm -hmm. so we did a lot of brands within the scope of europe though mm -hmm. it was a european course um so um, we were taught the climate of social media and what social media is um, with regard to the whole marketing structure. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a form of marketing, right? Mm -hmm. So we were taught exactly what social media means for, 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 for marketers, mm -hmm. why it's necessary to brands and why it's very important also to, to develop differentiate which mm -hmm. social media platforms to you to use for different brands mm -hmm. for instance certain brands or certain brands within certain industries don't need stuff like a twitter or an mm -hmm. instagram mm -hmm. so which ones are more yeah. more um suitable for that specific um company we were taught um how to speak to customers through social media what kind of tone to use for which kind of company within which kind of industry mm -hmm. um yeah that was that okay. was basically more so do you yourself uh, are you yourself active in social media if so how what is your brand positioning i am um, actually to know that i wanted to do something in social media is because i was pretty active on my own personal social media i actually liked it i liked the the thought of like taking content and posting it and have people like interact with that content and then there'll be times where I'd see something that was posted by a business and I'm like, gosh, I wish they tried to do it this way. Mm -hmm. And then I started following people like Lebo Lion, who's a digital marketer in South Africa. And I saw her work and how she did her work. And I was like, oh my gosh, I actually want to mm -hmm. get into the space. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm quite active on Instagram mostly. A little bit on Twitter 
Oh no, a little bit on Facebook mm. and LinkedIn. I'm not. I was on Twitter, but I'm not there mm. anymore. But yeah. yeah. Would you call yourself an influencer? I w- and what does it mean was. actually? <laughs> um, you were. I well, the thing is, I always positioned myself as a content creator because I like taking content. I like taking pictures and videos and stuff like that and being creative with that and editing them and stuff. Mm. But um, I had worked with brands Mm -hmm. that um, commissioned me as an influencer for that brand. So, Mm -hmm. yes. What does that entail and how does it like being an influencer? Um... It's it's more work than you actually think. Like I actually didn't think it was that much work because you have um, a brand will send you a brief, mm-hmm. like a very detailed brief that we want A, B, C, and D from you. Now you have to go into your little creative bubble and figure out how you're going to take these words and produce it into a piece of content, whether it's either a picture or a video. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, some brands will give you like creative freedom where they'll be like, okay. We want this. How can you? What do you think? How can you make it mm. sell to your audience? So okay. yeah. Can I ask an obvious question? Um, why do companies need social media positioning and marketing? Um, because we live in a digital world. Everybody, um, well, most people are on social media, um, and it's doing. It's reaching far more people than traditional media, for mm-hmm. instance. It's reaching far more people than a radio advert, than a TV advert, mm-hmm. you know, than your website, basically. It, 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 it has... The reach potential on social media is very, very fast. So that's the number one reason a, a, a company would have to go on social media as well. Mm-hmm. Especially if you are one who's not... Who's not... You put it you're based in one locality but you want to broaden the reach of people within maybe the country or the the continent or however if you are that if you have a growth perspective that of that social media might be a good starting point mm-hmm. to increase your reach yeah yeah let's talk about the company with which we are associated uh, creative culture how yes. did you first of all become involved with that company um, I saw, okay, so before working at Creative Culture, I used to be a freelancer. So I did a lot of projects with Ministry of, well, my sec, let me not try mm. and <laughs> say the whole thing, mm. but I did a lot of projects Ministry with... Ministry of social, Youth. Yes, mm. Ministry of Youth. So I did a lot of projects with them in terms of... Um, Basically, it was basically PR, but they needed social media also in the mix. Mm. So I did a lot of projects with them, but I felt like, okay, it's nice, it's good, it's a good learning experience, but I wanted to, I wanted to learn more. And if anyone knows, agency gives you um, different brands and different businesses to deal with. So it's a great um, platform to put your feet in mm. different brands and different industries. Um, so also because I wanted something more constant. You know, when, if, when you're a freelancer, it comes and it goes. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I really wanted something constant. There's, so no, that's there's no constant cash flow. Yes. Mm. So um, I saw an advert for a design position mm. and I have amateur design <laughs> skills. Mm. But I just, I was like, I'm going for it. Mm-hmm. Um, they called me for an interview um, and they offered me a slot. Yeah. Yeah. You've been there for two years now, as I understand it. Yes. What is the company mission? Um, creative culture, basically, um, I think the best, I mean, our name says it all, our, our, our logo says it all. Mm. We are a company of youth. <laughs> It's, it's, it's mainly young ladies. We have like one gent in the office. Mm. Um, but our mandate, honestly, is to give brands a, a fresh and refreshing feel to customers. We want to create campaigns or do things differently to what has already been done in the market mm-hmm. and hit it on the nail, mm-hmm. basically, with all our social media campaigns. Okay. Where are companies getting it wrong in your experience? Uh, I think the first thing that I can think of in the top of my head is not optimizing their social media platforms. I've seen where um, 
Kore, because you feel like there are so many platforms on social media that you should use all of them. Mm-hmm. And that takes away effort that can be taken to one social media platform to optimize it. I'll mm-hmm. give you an example. Something like tech. A tech company, if, you, if you're a person who uses Instagram, you wouldn't want to see a tech company on Instagram, on mm-hmm. ISP, for instance, on mm-hmm. Instagram. But Why? if you... Sorry? Why is that? Because Instagram is more lifestyle. Mm-hmm. We want to see what Mr. Mahomi is up to. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We want to see... Um, people living their life basically you know Mm -hmm. for advertising on instagram it's it's a hit and miss unless Mm -hmm. it's a lifestyle brand Mm -hmm. lifestyle brands do very well on instagram because it's a lifestyle um you know Mm -hmm. a a platform so but if you take instance and you look at linkedin for instance for isps or tech companies that does very well isp as in uh internet service providers yes yes yeah, I want so to that make does. sure nobody miss, <laughs> nobody gets lost there. Yeah, so it does very well because mm. you can optimize so you can do so many things. There are so many things like dynamic ads. You can go on dynamic ads and have specific ads targeting a specific person that you know would want to use your product. Mm. You know what I mean? If you're working in the finance financial sector, for example, and you have an app or an application that can help the finance financial sector mm-hmm. that ad can definitely go to somebody who is on he works there is somebody mm-hmm. who would be interested in knowing more about it it's somebody who um you know um is definitely a potential client you know so would you say companies are, are spreading themselves too thin they are mm-hmm. they really are they're spreading themselves too thin and not getting the the maximum impact they could be getting on social media had they been very strategic about the platforms that they choose to use. Yes. Yeah. Without perhaps mentioning names, are you able to give examples of some of your clients that you helped without saying who they are and tell us the before and after scenario? Okay, I would, I would uh, mostly because it's, it, it feels like a baby mm-hmm. <laughs> um, because I actually started the plat- the platform for them. Mm-hmm. So at first they were on, they had most of their their efforts, their social media efforts on Facebook. And they deal, their data management and data solution company. So it's, it's a very niched um, company. It's one that a layman wouldn't understand. You know, even like if you're saying document scanning, mm. nah, a layman is thinking BMS. Mm. Or I need to get a scanner or I can scan on my phone. Mm. But it's a different type of service and it's a service that is Business to business. Mm-hmm. It's not... b 2 B A. It's not... Facebook is a mass marketplace. Mm-hmm. You know, it's for everyone. But it's hard to target also such a niche market mm. on, on Facebook. So I diverted it to LinkedIn. And we started... They hadn't been there before. Sorry? They had not been active there before. They had, they had an account, um, but they weren't active. They were... They were I would say the... the the consistency of posting was very low mm. um, and it was as and when they mm. wanted to. Mm. Um, so I diverted a bit more to Instagram to the point where we, I mean, to LinkedIn to a point mm. where we actually left mm-hmm. Facebook altogether. And we started using... Um, That's because business people are already at LinkedIn. One. Mm-hmm. And like I said, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a very good platform for B2B because you can actually, your your advertising, if you're boosting or you're um, putting up an ad, you can actually target somebody who's working with a specific industry that you know would mm-hmm. be very much interested in the product that you're trying to sell them. It's sort of, you know how direct marketing works where you go and knock or apps or the apps, I have something for you here. Yes, yes. LinkedIn has features where it literally is a knock at somebody's mm. um, profile and say, hey, hi, my name is, and mm. this is my business, and mm-hmm. this is what I can offer you. So let me understand this. What are these tools that that are in LinkedIn that companies are not aware of or they're not utilizing? I've seen a lot. Um, first, it's dynamic ads. Mm-hmm. What um, is that? How does dynamic that work? ads is basically, I don't know if you guys have seen on um, LinkedIn, but where it would literally put your face and the company's logo mm-hmm. and have a little 
um, call to action and it will appear in any tab that you open on LinkedIn. So it will literally say, for instance, if I'm selling airtime to you, don't you want to top up with ten bula type mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. ad? Yeah, mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying. Mm. So it's basically it's very very targeted. It's very targeted. It's very straight to the point. LinkedIn even uses it. You mm. will see that they, if you're not a premium member, they will have that ad mm. <laughs> running on non-stop, your nonstop yeah. on your platform. So that's a very good marketing tool that mm. I've never seen a lot of companies mm. use. And does it cost money to use it? Um, it's like any other social media platform. When you do ads, it y- you have to have a budget. You can mm-hmm. budget and say, okay, within this week, I'm going to do this ad, and mm-hmm. this is how much I'm willing to spend mm-hmm. on it. Um, with LinkedIn, though, yes, um, it does give you like a minimum spend, which is it 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 um it re- it's really relative. It could be like eight hundred bucks mm-hmm. for a span of like a week or two. Okay. Yeah. So what happened as a result of you helping this company? What was the outcome eventually? The outcome was um, above and beyond just having mm. more following and having more engagement within the, the brand. People started understanding what services that they actually offered. Mm-hmm. You know, um, We started getting more leads on it as well. Um, we've had people from different... Um, industries also get to a point where they actually are saying okay we see um that you guys do anti-money laundering because that's one of the services and they'll be like how can we assist how can we um or become part of that become part of that or how does that service work for this kind of industry you Mm -hmm. know or i work in a in a construction company how does email if it does how does it help my 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 industry as well so we've Mm -hmm. gotten to a point where we've dissected all the technicalities of the brand and made it something that everybody comes to and asks for Mm -hmm. for the services yeah that sounds very exciting um are there companies that simply do not need social media are there exceptions to the rule Ooh, that's a good question Mm. Um, I'm going to be very biased and say no. Mm-hmm. It just depends on the platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it really, it's 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 like oxygen. Everybody needs it. I think so. I think, like I said, we're living in a digital world, mm-hmm. and and mainstream media, even though it's still there, and especially in Botswana, we the Komarakonyana we're still mm. trailing back a bit. Um. It doesn't work as best or mm. it doesn't do as much as social media because of the reach that that has. Do you think companies need full-time social media marketing uh, individuals or managers? Yes. Why? In as much as, you know, in as much as they have like a marketing manager within a company, mm-hmm. you need somebody who in essence is a digital marketer and understands the social media landscape. Because it's different. There's traditional marketing and then there's this one, which need it's 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 different KPIs sometimes, mm-hmm. it's different um channels, it's different means of communication, it's different voices, it's different mm-hmm. ways of, you know, getting to to, to your customer. Mm-hmm. So I do think um if not have your your um employees trained mm-hmm. a little bit or know a little bit more about social media because it's not just posting and getting mm-hmm. likes and getting followers and stuff like that there's a there's a little bit of a skill there's a little bit of strategy going into it so you need somebody who understands mm. that at least and what do you think personally sets you apart from the rest of other social media managers what is so is distinctive about about Gatso in this regard um I think you. This <laughs> is a time to shamelessly plug yeah, and promote to yourself. Yeah, bra- to brag a little bit. Mm. Um, but I think for one, I, 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 from doing my my course, I think also being I was Ghana one of the only ones in Africa, which was very bad because mm. time difference wasn't allowing me to do a lot of the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, because you mean I've your learned, classmates were mostly from they were mostly from Europe because mm-hmm. it was through London School of, 
of business, mm -hmm. right? Um, so just that exposure, exposure for me makes me feel like that makes it's it's a difference because we did like i said it was project based so i worked on um what is this assessment from companies from that side and learning from our lectures with people in the field also so they got to teach us a lot of things and mm -hmm. i think that for me is my my personal advantage mm -hmm. i have a little bit of mm -hmm. international advantage in me mm -hmm. <laughs> through that and i'm very meticulous i'm one person who looks at things and wants things done to to a mm. T. Mm. Yeah. You're very, very f uh, particular yeah. in the way you do things. Yeah. What do you think is different about our approach to social media in Botswana versus the rest of the world? Hmm. Or have we caught up now? I think we're catching up. Mm -hmm. I think we're catching up. I think um, one thing I've noticed, and I think it's 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 also a thing of um, accessibility to like stuff like internet as well, because we're a bit behind on that. Not everyone has Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and stuff, and data is it's somewhat expensive still. Um, but I think the difference with with us. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the world, it is, again, the way we use it or the way we optimize the social media platforms and which platforms we actually use. I think YouTube is something businesses are scared for, scared of. But I, I don't know why. I also don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> when you tell somebody, go on I, YouTube, I it's it. just like, it's a beautiful platform. It really is. Mm. It's a beautiful platform. And you know what? Um the market marketing has changed from I'm selling you something mm. to I'm selling you a vibe, mm. a, 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 an experience, a mood experience. Mm. and there's no better way to do it through video content. Mm. And YouTube is a great place to to do that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it's just we're we're behind on the way we use social media and. Everyone runs to Facebook. Mm. Everyone runs to Instagram because they mm. feel like everybody is there, but they don't understand that there's also... You have to be... Like I said, you have to understand the different platforms mm. and be strategic to know that if I use this one and optimize it in this way, mm -hmm. this is the kind of lead generation that I could get. Mm -hmm. And that lead generation, I can put it through the sales funnel and get myself my customers and get yeah. myself my money. So, yeah. All right. Um... I'm going to just not test you, but obviously throw a little something at you to get an idea of an appreciation of how you approach different industries. Okay. Suppose someone is straight out of law school and they've just opened their law firm mm -hmm. and they want to really position themselves and win in the social media thing. What advice would you give them? Um, a startup law firm. Mm. Okay. Um, the first thing that comes to mind also with 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 such because it's a service mm -hmm. and it's 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 a service that I need to trust mm. that where I'm going to, you'll be able to defend my cases when needs be and take care of because lawyers have say I'm only going to court I get where there's like wills there's um, investments that can go through lawyers and stuff mm -hmm. like that yeah. there's a little bit of I need to be trusting you with my personal space so with a law firm I would first rather say the the approach to social media would be to showcase that you, you're trustable you mm. are, you're trustworthy mm. and that the people that work for you are trustworthy so I would um, I would suggest um, I actually would suggest Instagram mm -hmm. to show that element of that trust with you to show you um, and your um, not your clients your your employees mm -hmm. um, you, the culture of your of your law firm the culture of who you are you guys are as a as a collective in that organization is the best it's, instagram is the best place to showcase mm -hmm. that you know um and tiktok and, you can do tiktok do as well post and what sort of post do you make 
um, no graphics mm-hmm. <laughs> or less graphics on Instagram. Mm-hmm. A lot of pictures, a lot of videos. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be pictures of you and um, your team or just the pictures of you. And then you have a nice um, caption that capsulates your culture mm-hmm. of that company. Um, like I said, TikTok can also be a good place to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you'd have... LinkedIn, which is more direct. You can do a lot of more direct marketing through LinkedIn this time around. Mm -hmm. This time around on LinkedIn, you can be a thought leader. Show them that you know what you mean. You know what I mean? Through LinkedIn articles and stuff like that. Um, And now then you can directly market your services also on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I'll shy away from Facebook. Why? um, And Twitter. (laughs) Um. Twitter, I don't understand completely, but Facebook, I do dabble in it a bit. Yeah. Why do you want to shy away from Facebook? Like I said, Facebook is mass. Mm. You know, the the brands that do good on Facebook are your fast and consumable goods, your your mass products. You mm. know, like your your bonitas and stuff. Mm. Like those are the products for Facebook because they are for the masses. Mm-hmm. But something like a law firm. It's tricky on Facebook because it can be a, a bad PR shift mm. because it is available. Your content is available to everyone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So, okay. I don't know. I'll shy away from that. I understand. Now, you know, it's, it's, it must be difficult for, you know, social media marketing companies to market themselves um, because... They are already looking to market other people. <laughs> so yeah. how do you traverse that tricky space? You market yourself while marketing others. Oh, okay. I, I think that's something we are struggling with <laughs> mm. at our current, um, at Creative Culture, being that we don't have t- Like, we literally don't have time mm. to sit and think of strategies for our own com- for for our own um, social media pages Mm. Um, and mostly for us honestly word of mouth is working like we will have one satisfied client and then the next one comes and Mm -hmm. says we saw A, B, C and D Um, or it could be just because of pitching when Mm -hmm. we pitch we do have some clients to come back Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, sometimes it's we've we've, it's such a tough one Sometimes we've actually thought of giving another company mm. <laughs> our page mm-hmm. to handle. I think that is also a good one because they're actually empowering each other mm-hmm. in, in a sense. Um, so maybe that could be the mm-hmm. solution to give each other business also. I'm, I'm just thinking some and customers might say, you want me to blow up and grow on social media, but look at you yourself because mm. you're, you're, all your focus is on growing other people. Don't you find that to be maybe a little bit of a limiting factor um, in convincing some customers? Yes and no. Yes. Because in an essence, you need to be an expert of what you're doing to be able to help somebody else, right? Mm. So it's kind of like, mm. but at the other end of it is like, a doctor never heals themselves. Yeah, they don't, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. they help other people. So yes. it's, it's two ways yeah, to yeah. seeing it. But I also get that so argument. Yes and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, so in terms of, um, let's argue, um, let's talk about non, non-private businesses mm. like government and parastatals. Is there a particular approach that you recommend for those? Hmm. That's another tricky one because anything government related is literally put on a microscope, mm. uh, especially on social media. Um, maybe because of the politics behind it, but um, I think it just depends on the approach. I mm. think if if it's if anything. To be closer to, to the people, to be. Um, for mass reach to the people, social media would also be a good platform, you know. When you say social media, you mean which one? For mm. <laughs> mm. Um Your Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Facebook is a good one mm-hmm. for the government. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I said, if you're getting closer to the people, bringing information to the people, like I said, it's a mass. Do you also act for 
for parties like government and so on? Uh, right now, no. Okay. Yeah, it was previously when I was an influ um, a freelancer, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of achieving growth, what metrics do you use to see if somebody is successful on social media? Is it just the number of followers or what do you look at? Engagements? How do you, how, how do you assess growth and success? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think, to be quite honest, it's quite different for, for different industries, I think. I think for um, for B two B specifically, I'd say the best metric is leads. Mm -hmm. The best KPI is definitely leads. Mm -hmm. Is are, are they going back and saying we saw this on social media, or we saw this via your website or whatever? Mm. Um, uh, so I think that one is a is a big KPI. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll have stuff like your, I'll give an example of like a restaurant. Biggest KPI for me for restaurants isn't likes and comments, but it's mm. people who are actively asking questions. Mm -hmm. It'll be the messages. Mm -hmm. Are we getting enough messages to, like a, it's, it's like a lead. inquiries. Yeah. Mm. Inquiries um, and stuff. Because somebody can like a picture and mm. not be interested in the service that you offer. Mm -hmm. But are they actively asking about it? Are mm. they making ways mm -hmm. to go grab themselves? Okay. Yeah. Do you yourself have mentors in the space? Who do you look up to in the social media space? Oh my God. Okay. Um, huh. the, mm. First, like I said... Um, Both in BW and outside. In BW? Mm. <laughs> Uh, thing with Bozan is I don't know a lot of us. I don't know a lot of social media except I think. But Hofa Anamuti says. Is yeah, she's been on the show a couple of times. Oh, mm. great! Mm. Um, I like her. I've watched some of her content um, on Instagram as well. Um, I think she's doing. I don't know if I don't know if I should say she's our po poster chat like uh, what do you, what do you call it mm. ambassador because she's doing it so well to show people that it's there's there's it's not mm. just she's both a poster child and an ambassador and tr mm. true mm. I think she's doing a good job by showing people that it's not a small thing mm. yeah she's showing people that it is a career for those who want to go into it she's showing businesses that there is a lot of thought that goes in the back end of it. Mm. And I think her dissecting what um, I'm going to label it as digital marketing is, mm -hmm. is helping a lot of us who are now trailing behind sort of go and plea our case because mm. now people are aware of what it is. Okay. Um, so I think her, I think I will say mm. her. She's also my hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I'm just going to make mention of her because she's actually the reason why I thought I wanted to go into the space, which is Lebo, mm -hmm. um, Lebo Lion in South Africa. She's also a trailblazer. What is she known for? She does um, digital marketing and media communications. Mm -hmm. um, and she's done a lot for herself in the space, both in agency settings and as her own, her own brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. And um, is she got a large following? Is that she it? does? Okay. She's written books actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. She's written books. She's she does a lot of panel panel discussions. She's done a lot of interviews. Um, she also I think she had a radio show as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And what's a particular trick or particular thing you learned from her that you're applying? Um. I think the one thing that I learned um, from her, and I'm going to also add Hofa mm. Onemuting, is to be, you know, we, we're in essence creatives. Mm -hmm. And um, creativity is innate. It's not something that you can copy and stuff like that. Mm. And one thing I t I've taken from them is to just be true to yourself, yourself yeah. and be able to sit within and, and, and let your mind 
sort of like your creative the the creative mind that is mm-hmm. be the one that is enabling you throughout the course of your career mm-hmm. yeah i'm going to mention three people i want to want that i i check i follow on social media i want to get your views on them okay the first one is, is it a business or is it a personal brand yeah, both okay for instance <laughs> gary v what gary. are your thoughts on gary v i don't think can i look up oh you don't <laughs> know gary v oh know. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's, 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 he's all over. He, he talk, mm-hmm. he's got, talks about wines. He's written books. He's written a book called Crushing It, in Social Media Marketing. Mm-hmm. What about uh, Beth David? You don't know him. No. The, 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 and then what about Damon J- John? The shark, Damon John. Damon John. Okay. I think that one is... Okay, he has a know. book. He's got many books. I think I've uh, read one of his books, actually. That mm-hmm. does sound very familiar. Mm-hmm. Okay. That does so sound very now familiar. We want to, I want to go back to the issue of the question of being a social media influencer. Someone referred to me uh, as a social media influencer, and yeah. I got offended. Oh, why? <laughs> because I said, I'm a serious businessman. I'm, uh-huh. I'm a visionary leader, social... But then the more I think about it, um, that maybe, yes, you want to be influential in some ways. So I want to have your take on the label of influencer. Uh-huh. Yeah, because there was a time when it was confused with slay queens and <laughs> things like that. Isn't it still not? I don't know. Oh, you can my tell gosh. Me. I like how you put it because I think there's also a difference. They are people who are influential that we all look up to and read, like an Oprah or mm. Michelle Obama. Those are people, they're not influencers, but they are influential within their own right, you mm-hmm. know? Mm. Um, and then there's influencer who now is a paid person on social media. I mean, public figures also dabble into it as well. But this is a person who's... Um, career is focused solely on social media these are people that create content that is solely for the purpose of um pushing brands on social media mm-hmm. you see so like i said you can be influential but with the a influencer mm-hmm. you can be a public figure but you're not an influence we can't say bonang mateba is an influencer she's influential you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And Slay Queens? I, d- I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Ones? Um, I get to go to Gaffa back. Yeah, but they are such people. They are, yeah. But mm. what are Slay Queens? Maybe it's just girls who like looking good mm-hmm. and having fun. Who knows? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's not a clear term. I don't know what it okay. means. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, I want us to talk a little bit about Twitter. Uh, which has recently changed to X. First mm. of all, has that change affected its usage in any way or its reach in any way? Or has it affected it in any way? Because it came overnight. Oh. Yeah. Of, of, for now, it hasn't. Mm. I think it, it it's still the same feel. Mm. Mm. Twitter is I use it for... But I don't personally use Twitter it for Twitter and X, it doesn't roll off the tongue the it's same way. It's not. I hate the fact that they changed it. Mm. I don't know if it, well, they were threatened by Mark going for threads, mm. and they were like, no, we need a new rebrand, which mm. brands do need sometimes. You know, mm. when you've been there in the market for so long, sometimes it's nice to just mm. show off Nyana and get a new little, little look and feel. But so far, nothing major has changed, especially if you're looking for if you're looking at businesses on on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's so not it's the, much of a big but, difference. But I, I I find it very awkward myself. And Twitter. I, and I'm not active that much <laughs> in Twitter. Yeah. Why is it so awkward? And it seems to work well for politicians, but so for you know us business why? people, it, yeah. it's opinion based. Twitter is fast paced, like conversations, opinions being you know mm. thrown out. Mm. It's very good for for people like politicians or people that like starting conversations to be on Twitter because you have to be. Oh, it's it, opinions. Yeah. Mm. It's basically just opinions. Mm. But we're not crying. Mm. So that's why it works for them. Yeah. I don't know if I'm the only businessman who doesn't relate to it. Or, or are you able, do you have the skills to help someone who's a bit uh, 
I don't want to say allergic, but a bit uh, <laughs> reluctant on it, on it. To, to get into it. And, and how, would you, how would you go about helping such a person? Again, it's all on the goals that you're using Twitter for. Like I said, it's, it's very opinion-based, mm-hmm. you know. And it can go left on Twitter. You can say something, somebody perceives it in a different light, and then it, it starts another um, problem or conversation on the other end. Mm. Um, and um, it's good sometimes to show that you know what you're saying and mm-hmm. to also reach and have conversations with another person also on Twitter. Mm. But if you like a clean rep, you, if you if you like your PR a little bit on the cleaner side of life, mm. tread carefully with, with Twitter, especially mm. the uses there. It's, mm. it's really perception, opinion-based. Mm. Anything can go anywhere with Twitter. Whatever you say on Twitter can be taken any other way. And I why think is that's that unique why it to Twitter? Why is that unique to us? Why does it happen in other platforms? Because I think it's it's how the the, 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 the platform... Is it the algorithms? No, I just think it's just the platform. Mm-hmm. Can it Twitter is, it's just tweets. That's mm. it, it's like BB, BB, what was it? BBM. You know, BBM, it was just mm-hmm. no quala status. Say, hey, like somebody responds and then mm. you guys can have a conversation. Mm. That's basically Twitter. Mm. Twitter, mm. you write your feelings or your opinion on something. Somebody retweets because mm. they like it. Somebody comments and then a conversation starts from there. Yeah. So I think it was just, it's just how it was. Yeah. Even though it evolved from it just being conversations and you can now share like a picture, a gif mm. and stuff. People still kept it at mm-hmm. conversation starting or yeah. talking or opinion sharing or looking for p- different perspectives. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the money. Um, I want to talk about the money from the point of view of the social media, you know, manager, mm-hmm. how, how do they position themselves to optimize and monetize optimally on social media? Um, I'm d- like, okay, so you're saying from a social media manager yeah. perspective. Mm. Okay, um, how you can monetize, mm-hmm. basically how you make money. Um, I was given the advice to code on your time. It's basically, it's so time consuming, Mm. you know, from starting with strategy, coming up with the social media strategy to actually implementation of content and everything of of that sort. So I think to monetize, it needs to be, you have to look at your, your hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many hours you're actually putting into a specific, if it's a project, if it's a brand, you, you look into that. Mm. Yeah. But how is the market responding? Do social media managers actually make serious dough? No. <laughs> Why? No. I, you know what? It's in two ways. Mm. You know, I think one, um, we're still at a stage where companies don't understand the investment that they're putting into social media. So sometimes when you come to somebody and you say, I can charge you 10,000, they are like, no, wait. For social media, well, we're not crying. Mm. So there's that element of it and then on the upside the other side it's also on us because i I think sometimes we also don't know how to cost ourselves or Mm -hmm. we also don't know the value that we're bringing Mm -hmm. into the market so like somebody's okay with somebody paying them two thousand as a social media manager well that shouldn't be the case Mm -hmm. so it's those it's it's those i think yeah that's how i see it Mm -hmm. it's both sides of that coin let me understand this. Um, it, it, it's 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 still the wild, wild west. In other words, it's not governed or anything like that. No, it really isn't. So how 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 does the industry try to regulate itself or to control itself in the interest of the public? Uh, huh, that's a really good question. Mm. Um. You know, I'd, I'm, this is just my personal belief, mm. but I always feel like when you're within an industry, especially in somewhat, because we're not corporate, mm-hmm. we're, we're also not uh, that other side of the creative where we're like artists and stuff like that. We're mm-hmm. literally right in the middle. Mm-hmm. So if we, if there's a, 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 
a community of us if there was something that kind of like binded us together where we could get together and discuss it and things like this mm -hmm. and have um where we know Jorge, this is the standard for all of us mm -hmm. no none of us can earn below a certain i don't want to say union but something something like that something mm. that 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 is that we can um, create laws and 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 um, what is this? Mm. Yeah. So it's still a work in progress. I, do you it, ever it get really together? Is. Have you formed an organization, or are you thinking about that? I think this is something we we can think should, of. Yes, we really yes, should. should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I do know that um, in terms of agencies like um, di digital market or marketing agencies mm. in Botswana. People know each other. Mm. I think that's a good start. We all the the, the owners know each other. Mm. Um, some work together on certain projects, so that's really good. You'll have like a client who wants four agencies to work yeah. on a specific project. So, I think because we have that base, mm -hmm. hopefully something like this could could yeah. happen. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the Chinese one, TikTok. <laughs> How does one position themselves to succeed on TikTok? Mm -hmm. The beauty of uh, I have never seen anything like TikTok because the beauty of TikTok is if I like what you're doing, I'm going to <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm going to look. I'm going to see your videos. Mm. So, for instance, if if I'm on TikTok and I like watching motivational, um, I don't know, motivational content. content mm and you are a motivational content um, creator, mm -hmm. I'm most probably going to see it because it just feeds me everything that comes mm -hmm. from that angle. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, the reason why a lot of... I don't want to say... I, I can't say influencers, but a lot of personalities are coming up from TikTok is because it's like that. Mm -hmm. It just feeds you. It's and That's why people... I'm scared of TikTok because I know I can be there for hours just... Mm -hmm. And it's things that I like, so mm. it's not like kito borera or anything. So is the, is the uh, algorithm uh, positioned or optimized to target to know what you like? Yeah. More than the others. And more than the others. Why do for you say sure. That? Um, I'll give an example with Instagram. Mm. Instagram has done this thing where it will show you what your followers, what pe what the people you're following and interacting with are interacting with mm -hmm. which might not necessarily be what i would mm -hmm. like or what i would like to interact with yeah. right mm -hmm. um facebook the same way gi smang mang liked this mm -hmm. picture so i'm going to pop it up to the next person that this person also follows mm -hmm. um so it's not it's not targeted <laughs> at all it's just mm -hmm. based on your community of, of people that you follow and what they are doing or what they are liking. Mm. Um, I know on the explore page, if I tap on something on Instagram, it will definitely show me more of that, mm. that I've, that I've tapped on. But like I said, it's, it's usually, it'll be like similar to people, people. Yeah. Similar mm. to people you follow or, um, because smang mang, like, like it's always, it's based on the community mm -hmm. of people. But TikTok is not like that. It won't show me what you're looking at. It will show me on the things that I want no. to to look at. Yeah. So it seems a lot smarter then. It is. In that sense. It's way smarter. Mm. It's way smarter. Wow. Now, let's talk about Africa now. Is there any prospect of having an African-based platform that anytime would be soon? so cool. <laughs> Yeah, is anybody that working on it so in your cool. industry? Or is it desirable? Any, it's desirable. I would like that. Now that you said that, I would actually, mm. I would, I, I think that would be so amazing. Mm. Um, but I don't but know. we need to have more of our entrepreneurs in that space, and Definitely. maybe have a bit more of our what do you call them the. Um, uh, our engineers, our software engineers. And I mean, Africa has, has, has a lot of talent. I'm sure someone can come up with that. Mm. Yeah, that would be really a different social media platform, different feel mm. and experience that comes yeah. from Africa that yeah. would be revolutionary. When I look at my followers, I notice that when it gets to age 50 and above, it stops. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, people over 50, yeah. they don't... They don't uh, yeah. 
what can we do and what can people in your industry do to get people over 50 to get involved in social media why do they have such resistance towards it i think the resistance um i will t i'll take it from my own parents how i saw it they thought social media was a young person's thing like it was just it's for the youth it's fed. yeah and, uh, yeah um, for the youth. but i think when you realize that your social media is um can be far more than just a young people thing you can use it for different things mm -hmm. then that's when somebody would want to go into it no one thought that social media can be used for businesses but here we are now you mm -hmm. know what i mean nobody thought that facebook could have a marketplace where you can buy things from other people you know mm -hmm. what i mean but here it is um nobody thought people can have online boutiques and r run it solely through social media mm -hmm. but here we are mm -hmm. so it's just I think it's just generally because they don't know what they'll be using it for. Mm. Yeah. How, how do we overcome that resistance? How do we educate? Uh, or is one of those things where you can't teach an old dog new tricks? I don't think so. I never think... The thing is also, I think um, older people are more... I don't know how to say it. Mm. They yes, they are they are they are very resistant to change and try new things, but they're very practical. You mm. know what I mean? They're mm. practical people. If it makes sense, if mm. it, they can think, if it one plus one equals two, they will do it. Mm. So maybe educate just then just educating them mm. on. Just continue to educate them. Yeah. For instance, I'll give an example of my mom. My mom didn't like social media at all. Mm. She was just like, "What are you guys doing on this thing?" Mm. And she thought it was <laughs> it was a platform where we show each other bad habits and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> but now she's using it as a means of communicating with her loved ones. Like mm. my mom is the type to um, go on Facebook and see what my cousin in Francis town is doing and mm. just, you know, get mm. to know what, know what they're doing that side. So mm. for her, that is what social media means to her, mm. you know? So somebody can do that the way, the same way I know, for instance, my grandparents didn't like a cell phone, mm -hmm. but prefer a landline. But once mm -hmm. you showed them oh, no cell phone, how look we get the get there, we can still it call can you. Work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the same thing. It's just basically educating them yeah. to know that it's it's bigger than what they think and it can help them in practical ways. Let's talk about WhatsApp. Some people don't think of it as social media but it is. I want you it to has evolved into it. Yeah. yeah. Can, can, can you address WhatsApp a little bit? And in doing so, help us understand how we can position it for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think WhatsApp started off as instant messaging, yeah. right? It started off just as a, a cheaper in somewhat of a way than text messaging, right? Mm -hmm. Um um and then meta bought it so it's part of your facebook and your instagram mm. so you can link you can actually link mm. your Mark Zuckerberg to yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> um so you can definitely link your whatsapp to your facebook for instance and especially if it's a business account yeah yeah and your 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 instagram and have ads running on WhatsApp for mm -hmm. your business. So any contact you do of that? yours. You need a person like you to help all that, set that up. I mean... <laughs> is, is that correct? Um, you can set it up easily because it's just a matter of connecting the pages. Mm. Um, but in terms of like, again, the strategy behind it, yes, you'd need somebody like me. Mm. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a beautiful tool. I know there are some companies that we work with currently that we do advertise on WhatsApp mm. for them, especially um, food. I know a lot of food um, restaurants, especially fast food restaurants, are using it. KFC is using it. Mm. Um, Vasilos is using it. There are a number of them that mm. use WhatsApp advertising, um, WhatsApp ordering. You can order, which is I love that. The mm. fact that I can go on WhatsApp and order instead of call in very, very... It's mm. cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's more accessible. It's easier. It, yeah. Yeah. Now, social media is obviously dominating everywhere. 
but are there specific rules, protocols, or etiquette that you think people need to learn about the use of social media mm-hmm. so that it doesn't a waste our time and it's, it doesn't it's not, it's, it's, it doesn't abuse us, so to speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. um, the beauty of social media, and I think a lot of people don't know, is that it has community guidelines. Mm. Yeah, it's like any other place. So, the terms and conditions, right? Mm. And um, it's, I think, it. <sighs> Do we even know what those guidelines are? I don't think so. I think Motwatsana Airlines just starts yeah. using them. And then the moment they infringe on it, that's when they go back and start learning about those community guidelines. Mm. But yeah, it, those guidelines, um, they protect us from stuff like bullying, um, fraud, mm. and all of those kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is very important because that is, it's a very ungoverned place. Mm. The, like it's, it's not... Hey, it's, it's, it's not regulated. It's not regulated. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think those are a good measure. But also, I think when you take it upon yourself as a user to also understand that you also have responsibility mm-hmm. on what you share and mm-hmm. what you put up on social media from a personal perspective, even as a brand, you mm-hmm. know that you can't... Um, you know, be biased in certain ways or, mm. you know, you can't uh, approach things in a certain way or be very bullish mm-hmm. to your competitors or your, to your to your customers as well. So, yeah, there is a certain etiquette that needs to go into social media. But I think also for us as users as well, we need to, we need to understand that it isn't, it isn't that deep. <laughs> it is that deep, but it really isn't mm. that deep. You mm-hmm. know, it's it's for instance, if it's stuff like Twitter, it's people just sharing their opinions, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be brutal, it can be brutal, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. If it's on Instagram, it's people showing that that their lives or their mm-hmm. lifestyle, and that's still fine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. So, is there anything where you think about Botswana failing in terms of uh, not just the guidelines? Is there something that they're doing wrong with? If you had the power, you could advise them otherwise. Mm. On social media usage. On social media usage? Mm. <laughs> uh, people shouldn't quote me on this, but I really do think we we take things too personal. You can even see it in some certain comments in on business pages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, for instance... Um, Something can be 300 bula at a restaurant and somebody takes offense to the fact that it's 300 bula. Or, do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We take it way too serious than what it's meant to be for a person who's consuming it, Mm. you know? But, yeah. Yeah. How how do you handle that? If people are, for instance, jumping at you or insulting you on social media... Mm. I've always believed the best rule is to ignore it. Like then in a couple of days it dies. Because if you respond, you feed it and it drags on. Am I right in that sort of yeah. approach? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think... I think with anything in life, sometimes reaction in the moment is not, mm. is not good. Um, especially when something is fired up. I think yeah. when it's when it's something that's so fired up, you just need to take a step back yeah. and look at it from different perspectives. Is it actually good for you to go back and say something or should you just leave it? Mm. Um, but there are some instances where you do have to say, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. If Especially if you're a business on social media and a customer comes to you with a complaint, it's even if it's on the comments, take it to the side, to the, to the DMs or to the inboxes, and deal with it and mm. suppress it. I mean, mm. it also it also goes back to what they say about customer service. You need, the, I mean, the same etiquette applies there as well. Mm. Yeah, that's very interesting. Now, what do you say are career opportunities that are still available in this space? If there's a youngster there scratching mm-hmm. their heads, wondering what to do, what would you advise them? The beauty of it is. Um, they they actually is a lot. There's there's still a lot Tell in us. this space. Mm. Um, 
More so because the the pla- like I said, the platforms are many. Um, it's just that we don't we don't use all of them here. Um, but yeah, in you can be a social media manager. You can be solely on social media strategy as well. You can be data analytics. Just the person who goes and looks at the analytics of these social media platforms help the strategist come up with strategies. Um, and KPIs for those and stuff like that, you can um, aid social media. I think people don't understand. The thing is also, um, even as a lawyer, you can aid the industry in any possible way that you can. You can be, you know, they have sports lawyers who says they can't have lawyers that help this specific industry as well. Mm. Um, You can... I mean, there's still there's still so much you can mm-hmm. be, um, and even as a social media manager, you can niche. You can just mm-hmm. say, "Nah, give me a Facebook or I'm just going to deal with Instagram and stuff like that." Mm-hmm. Um, you can create content and be specifically that. You can have, um, I know, man. The, the one thing that I think also we we struggle with in Botswana for. Um, I'm going to say agencies in, 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 in all is content that is for Botswana. So you can mm-hmm. literally say, ah, if I'm a photographer, I'm good with photography. I can then um, supply stock images for, for Botswana mm-hmm. in terms of graphic design for, for content that's posted on social media. Um, yeah, you can have studios that are just for creating content for social mm-hmm. media, for social media managers as well. There's so much you can do even outside the scope to aid mm-hmm. to aid that industry yeah okay now this is the time of the show when you now look at the crystal ball and look 20 30 years ahead um, and tell us what the future holds for Katso what the future holds for I don't know whether you can talk about creative culture <laughs> that <laughs> yes. way down the line um, um, what can you tell us um, I think for creative culture, seeing how we've been growing, I see it as some a, a company that's doing a lot, especially in. I guess, I don't want to say lifestyle, but your mass product products. I think we deal a lot with mass products and mass um mass goods. You what know, do you mean by mass goods? like fast and consumable products mm-hmm. that you guys buy. Food, food, mm, um, consumable. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Your foods. Um, what do you do there in that space? Oh, we've we we deal with restaurants. Mm-hmm. Um, we've done stuff with the likes of your Pamalat, um, your um, anything actually under like Talis. We've also done. Um, but yeah, so that's where I see us moving more too than the corporate side, than the B2B side. Mm. So I see it moving gradually to that. I can't say about new clients that we got recently, mm-hmm. um, but those are the ones that we've worked with. Your, you know, your, we have stuff like Unguma Island Lodge. It was a lodge in, in, in Okavango. Very interesting one to deal with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I see creative culture going in that direction mm-hmm. more so. Um, opening more branches or what? Yeah, I mean, why not? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I do see. I do see it growing. It is um, a small company currently, but I do see it um, mm-hmm. evolving. What about for yourself, as culture? For Laura. myself, um, ooh. I think I I, 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 um, I want to grow beyond social media. Mm. Funny enough, I want to learn more about communications and just general marketing as it is. Mm. Um, but I see myself um, in spaces, also just giving back to the, to, the, to the space as well. So I see myself in spaces on which I can help the industry grow, Mm -hmm. but also growing myself as well beyond Mm -hmm. just the social media realm. All right. Yeah. You have a question for me? No? No. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. All right. As we conclude, look at that uh, camera, madam. Okay. And leave the viewer with one inspirational message as we wrap up. 
something uplifting, something. Mm. Oh my God, what can I say? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to do anything with anything that I do. Yeah. It has An to do with anything, what I do. Anything, just inspire them. Say something nice to the people. I'm trying to figure out, is it professional or it can be Both. just general? Oh, mm. okay. Um. Okay, it's too much of an effort. Okay, share all you your contact details, both um, on social media and physically. Where do people reach you and okay. your company? You can find me at, at Laura Gaurute on Instagram. Um, on Facebook, it's Katso Laura Khaurutu. Um, my comp the company that I work for, Creative Culture, you can find it at Creative Culture BW on both Facebook and Instagram. You can email us at admin at creativeculture.co.bw um, if you're interested in any of our services. Um, and you can find our website as well. It's www.creativeculturebw.co.bw. BW. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That concludes our conversation. Please remember to subscribe and to strike the notification bell as well. Thank you very much for taking the time out to listen to this podcast. And thank you for being a wonderful thank guest. Thank you for having me. Okay.